encounter a problem like this, you're not going to sit there and make a 3D model and try and figure it all out. So um, let's just talk about what always applies, okay? So four cross-sections of area in terms of X, okay, meaning that they are perpendicular to the X axis, so your area equation is going to be in terms of X, the volume of that solid, is the integral from A to B of all your areas. Now, the reason why it's an integral is because you're accumulating, okay? You're adding up all these areas. Now, we only did 10 cross-sections, but we could have done infinitely many. The more that we did, obviously, the more solid this would have become and would have looked more like an actual solid three-dimensional figure. Um, I just didn't want us to spend five days on it. Um, and a whole bunch of materials. <clears throat> but we could have infinitely many of these and it would create this entire volume. So it would be integral from A to B. Um, if you're doing them perpendicular to the y axis, then your equation needs to be in terms of y. And you're going to be integrating C to D, it's just using different variables there. Um, so it's not implying the same thing. Okay? The key is you have to figure out the area equations based on the shape of the cross section. Okay, and sometimes you may need to manipulate an equation based on uh, what they're wanting in. So here is a illustration, a 3D illustration. It's the same shape, uh, but the first one has uh, cross sections that are perpendicular to the x axis, and the second one has your cross sections perpendicular to the y axis, but they're dictated by the same curve. Right here, it looks like it's a flat, uh, no, it's not flat, it's a triangle, okay, kind of like we, we do, um, it's a triangle, but theirs is on the y-axis instead of ours was uh, centered on the x-axis, uh, but that created that shape. These were squares, okay, these are cross-sections that are squares. Um, but sometimes it's easier to figure it out one way uh, versus another. So this is the, this is a picture of their base, okay, the triangle that they use base, and I just have some examples of uh, cross sections that would be perpendicular to the x axis. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at a problem here. These are the equations that you were just using um, the volume of the solid at the base that's bounded by 1 minus x over 2, negative 1 plus x over 2, and x equals 0. The cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are squares. So these are the steps you're always going to take. You're going to start by graphing your base so that you can get that visual. You've got to determine the area formula for the cross sections. You've got to set up your integral and then you're going to evaluate. So the whole purpose of graph graphing the base is so you can figure out your endpoints. So with this function, we've got 1 minus x over 2 is this curve. Negative 1 plus x over 2 is this curve. Um, obviously, we're starting at x equals 0. Where do we end? Where does this triangle end? x equals 2 is where this ends. That's just what, mm, I don't know why that looks like that. That's x equals zero right now. I don't know what happens. Yeah, that's a zero. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> okay. So the area, first of all, we are dealing with a square. Okay, so a square, the area formula for a square is side squared. Now we need to replace that S with something in terms of X. Okay, the side, I'm just going to draw an example of one right here. This is one of the sides of a square. Well, to figure out that length, we're talking about the Y values. Okay, this Y value plus this Y value is going to give us that total distance right there. Um, so there are two ways of looking at it. You can look at it as this y value minus the bottom y value. Or because this one is symmetric, you could just do two times 
the positive, the 2 times 1 minus x over 2. Um, either way, you come to the same conclusion that it is 2 minus x when you combine like terms. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. Negative x over 2 minus x over 2 is negative 2x over 2, which is negative x. <clears throat> All right, let's set up the integral. So the volume is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of our area formula integrated with respect to x. So before we can integrate, we got to FOIL that out. 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Then we can integrate 4x minus 2x squared plus x cubed over 3. Evaluated from 0 to 2. The nice thing is when we're plugging 0, we get 0. So we've just got uh, 4 times 2 minus 2 times 2 squared plus 2 cubed over 3, which is 8 minus 8 plus 8 over 3. So the volume of this, the exact volume of the figure formed by squares, cross-sections that are squared perpendicular to the x-axis is 8 over 3 cubic units. Okay? All right. Let's look at another one. Find the volume of the solid whose base is bounded by the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4 with cross sections that are isosceles triangles perpendicular to the x axis. Okay, so I went ahead and drew the base here. The base is the circle. The cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis. Okay, so here's an example of a cross section. Um, now I'm going to draw what the cross section actually is over here so I can visualize it when I'm setting up my area formula. Okay, so my area is one half times the base. We've got to come up with an equation for the base of this triangle. It is what I've drawn over here. So how can we, in general terms, find the length of that base? Okay, 2 times the y. That's coming from the fact that this is symmetric. Okay, this is the same as this. It's just this one down here is negative. Okay. So our y coordinates, we've got to solve our equation here for y. x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. We need to solve it for y. So y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared. And take the square root. No, that does not simplify to 2 minus x. Y'all love to do that, but it's not how it works. Okay. So that's the y value. So this entire base is 2 times that because it's symmetric. Well, if it's an isosceles triangle, then the height is the same thing. So our area is 1 half times the base times the height. Good luck, Seth. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify it before we plug it into the integral. So let's see here. The so 1 half cancels with one of those twos, so we've got 2 times what happens when we multiply square root times itself. It undoes itself, so we're just left with what's under the square root. <coughs> so the area of these figures are 8 minus 2x squared. So that represents the area of each triangle. We need to set up the integral. So what are the limits 
on our integral here. What y go, or what x value will we range you to? How'd you figure that out, Daniel? Good guessing. Good guessing. Mm-hmm. That's the equation of the circle. And four is equal to the radius squared. So the radius of this circle is two. So that's why our limits are from negative two to two of eight minus two x squared dx. So we integrate 8x minus uh, 2x cubed over 3 from negative 2 to 2. Wait, we're just going to end up canceling out. Maybe. Hang on. Let's do it. I always forget on this one. Hang on. All right. <clears throat> uh, 8 times 2. Minus 2 times 2 cubed over 3 minus 8 times negative 2 minus 2 times negative 2 cubed over 3. No, it's okay. Alright, 8 times 2 is 16. 2 cubed is 8, so that's minus 16 thirds. That's negative 16 plus 16 thirds. So when we distribute the negative, we get 32 minus 32 over 3, which is, let's see here, 96 over 3 minus 32 over 3, 64 over 3. Cubic units. Okay. This next one's really cool. I'm actually going to show you where the volume of a sphere equation comes from. Okay. If you don't remember volume of a sphere, this is what our answer is going to turn out to look like. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now I'm going to tell you, well, how did somebody figure that out? Because that's really strange and random. How did they figure out that was exactly the equation for the volume of the sphere? So the way that this picture is set up is to show you that our uh, base here is a circle, okay, in the x, y plane we have the circle, it, excuse me, it has a radius of the big R, okay, um, and our top sections are complete circles, you all have seen examples where there was a semicircle, these are complete circles, um, so let's come up with our area formula, Okay, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, the expression for the radius here, and they give it to us, it's just using Pythagorean theorem, is the square root of big R squared minus x squared squared. So when you square a square root, that cancels. So that's the area of each of our circles, our cross sections. So when we set up our integral, our volume is from negative r to big R of our area with respect to x. So before we integrate this, I'm going to pull the pi in front just to get it out of the way. Pi is just a constant, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Big R is just representing a constant. 